This is Algebra 2, Chapter 10, Section 2, in which we will study arithmetic sequences and series. We talked about arithmetic sequences a little bit last time. Those were the ones where you added some constant value to get from one term to the next. And that constant was called the common difference. If we know the first term and we know that difference, we can find any term in the sequence using the AN formula, as I like to call it. The nth term in the sequence is equal to the first one plus n minus 1 times the difference. Okay. They can ask us to find terms using this formula in a couple of different ways. The first way is they just give it to us straight up all the information we need. We know a1, we know d, we know n. So all we have to do is plug into the an equation plug the values in that we need, or that we know, do a little arithmetic, and we find out that the ninth term in the sequence, A9, is equal to 44. They can ask us this in another way as well. They want us to find A20. They tell me A1 and they tell me D. What they don't tell me is N, but they did tell me N. It's hiding out here in plain sight n is equal to 20. When they say a20, they're saying n is 20. Now I have all the information, just plug it in, do the arithmetic, and find out that a20 is negative 137. Now we can also use the an equation to write an equation for each term in the sequence, one that doesn't involve as many variables. And again, there's a couple of different ways they can throw this at us. First off, they can just give it to us straight. We have 12, 3, negative 6, etc. So we know A1, and we can figure out D really easily. D is subtract any two consecutive terms. The easiest place is to go the second term minus the first term. If I were watching this and taking notes, that would be something I might write down right here. D equals second term minus first term. Now that I know D and I know A1, I can plug into the AN equation, distribute the negative 9, and then collect up terms. And now I have an equation that all I need to do is plug N into, and I can find any term in the sequence just like that. Suppose they're not so kind. They don't tell me A1. Well, not telling me A1 means I have to figure out A1. So I have to plug into the AN equation first to go backwards to figure out A1. Clean up the arithmetic, subtract the 40 over. Now I know A1. I know A1 and I know D. Now I can do just like we did on this one. Plug in what we know distribute, and collect, and we get to our an equation. Now when you're looking at an arithmetic sequence and you have two numbers that have values in between them, those in-between values are called arithmetic means. So if I'm talking about the third term in the sequence and the sixth term in the sequence, Term 4 and term 5 are arithmetic means for those two because they're in between them. And what they like to do is ask us to find so many arithmetic means between two values. In this case, they want us to do five arithmetic means. So what they're saying is you have a sequence, negative 18, and then five values we don't know, and then 36. Well, I'm going to number off my terms. And I'm going to do that to help me get the information I need. Okay, what I really need to find is D. Now that I know where I'm at, I've got A1, and I know N is 7, I can plug into the AN equation and do a little cleanup work. Add the 18, divide by 6. Now I know D. D is 9. Well, now that I know D, I know how to get to the next term. Just add 9. 
just add 9 again, just add 9 again. And I keep adding 9, and that will fill in the missing terms, which I have answered down here in the blue. Once you have your D, you can get any of those terms you need just by adding on. Okay. Now we said we were going to talk about sequences and series. A series, an arithmetic series, is just the sum of the terms that are in an arithmetic sequence. You have three real options for how to find the sum of a series. One is you could just find all the terms and add them together. If it's a short sequence that we're talking about, I would be tempted to do just that. If it's a bigger sequence, then you're going to want one of these two formulas. Okay. Most of the time you're going to use option number two. That's the most commonly used formula. Occasionally it'll work out better to use this one, but most of the time you're going to be in formula number two there. So let's find the sum of the series. We have 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus a whole bunch of missing numbers plus 100. We could list all those numbers out and then add everything up. We could do that. It might take a while. Or we can do the work to figure out the n in this case. Because we know a first, we know a last, and we know the difference. Going from 2 to 4 is adding 2. What we don't know is n, so we can use the an formula to find n. Distribute, collect terms, and divide by 2. Now we know n is 50. Now we have everything we need to use formula number 2. Okay. Plugged in n, a1, and a last, or an. Did a little arithmetic, and my calculator gave me 2550. Okay. Now we can do the same kind of thing here. We don't know A1. We know everything but A1. Well, that's okay. We can find A1 using the AN equation. Plug in the information we know. Clean up the arithmetic and subtract. Now we know A1. Now that we have A1, I'm going to use formula number 3 just to show you how to use formula number 3. I probably wouldn't under normal circumstances, but I just want to show you how the formula works. So I'm going to plug in n, a1, n, and d. Clean up the arithmetic. And my trusty calculator tells me the sum is 960. Okay. Now using the sum, we can figure out the first three terms in the sequence. All we need to know is a1 and d. Well, doggone it, we don't know either one of those things. But we do know the SN equation, formula number two. I can substitute in the information I have, distribute the eight, and then divide everything by the two, subtract the 144, and then divide by four. Now I know A1. A1 will lead me to D using the AN equation. Plug in what we know, 8 minus 1 is 7, just in the interest of space. Move the 6 over, divide, now we know D equals 6. Now that I know A1 and I know D, start at A1, add D, add D again, and I have my three terms. Okay. We can do the same idea here with our next one. What we don't have is D. We have A1 this time, and we don't have N either, but we have A1, so we can plug into the SN equation, choice number two again, do a little bit of arithmetic, divide by the 132, now I know N is 40. Well, knowing N is 40, now I can use the AN equation to figure out my D like we did earlier. Do a little cleanup work, find out that D equals 8. I know A1 and I know D. A1 plus D gets me A2 plus D again, gets me my first three terms. 
Now, mathematicians like to condense things down in their work. So they use something called sigma notation to represent the sum of a series. Okay. Sigma is this E-looking thing. It's a Greek letter. You're always going to have some value on the bottom, k equals a. It won't always be k here. It could be any variable. And you'll have another value at the top. Those are the two that tell you the first and the last value. And then you'll have some kind of formula here to figure out the terms. Okay, You have two choices of how to do this. One is to plug in all the values for k and then add everything up. If it's a short sequence, again, I might just do that. Otherwise, you can use one of the SN formulas. Typically, you're going to use number two. So let's do a couple of these. We'll do one where we find each term, and then we'll do one where we use the SN formula. Now, notice they switched variables on me to M. That's okay. That doesn't change anything. It says start at M equals 1 and go until M equals 4. So for m equals 1, I'll plug in 1. For m equals 2, I plug in 2, then 3, then 4, and add those answers up, and I get a total. Okay, It's a short sequence. I can do that fairly easily with just those close-together numbers. Now suppose the numbers are further apart. I really don't want to find all those values. Well, I can plug in the first one to get a1. I can plug in the last one to get a n. Now I need to figure out how many numbers there are. And the rule is you take the top value minus the bottom one and then add one back because you're subtracting off too many here. So n is 13. Now I can use the sn equation. Plug in what we know and SN would come out to 1,053. If you found all the terms, it would also add up to that. Okay. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.